The world's largest aircraft carrier in the world. The latest update on the US naval fleet. The nuclear powered aircraft carrier. This is the USS Gerald R. Ford, the largest Navy aircraft carrier ever built. One of its kind and by far without equal. What makes up the world's largest aircraft carrier? And what keeps it ahead of its contemporary aircraft carrier? Is it even worth the billion dollars? Let's find out in this video. The Gerald R. Ford class aircraft carrier is the largest aircraft carrier in the world by a length with a total dimension of 333 meters or 1092 feet, a beam of 40.8 meters or 134 feet, and a flight deck width of 78 meters or 256 feet. Contained in that massive space are a total of 25 decks. The Gerald R. Ford class is set to be the premier naval asset for crisis response and early decisive striking power in a major combat operation. According to Military.com, Gerald R. Ford class aircraft carriers and carrier strike groups will provide the core capabilities of forward presence, deterrence, sea control, power projection, maritime security, and humanitarian assistance. It is expected to bring about improved warfighting capability quality of life improvements for the sailors, and reduce total ownership costs. Given these dimensions and provisions, Gerald R. Ford replaced USS Nimitz in its long-held reputation as the largest in the world. Expectedly, this massive aircraft carrier cost the US Navy the surmounting amount of $17 billion, not including around $5 billion spent on research alone. Named after the 38th US President, Gerald Ford is the current lead ship of the US Navy. It took 8 years to build and several more years to test and is comparable to the biggest buildings in the world. This massive ship can even house over 4,500 people and can carry over 75 aircraft. Considered the largest warship ever constructed, it is powered by two nuclear reactors and fully loaded and weighs in at over 100,000 tons. The ship's primary purpose is to provide a launch base for 75 aircraft. These aircraft are stored in a huge hangar inside a ship. That is when these aircraft are not on deck or not on missions. The hangar inside the ship also houses an array of weaponry and several massive lifts designed to move the weaponry from storage locations to the aircraft ready to be armed. Talking about takeoffs and landings, the Gerald Ford's deck is by far the longest, but pilots still have to launch and land the jets on just under 1,100 feet deck with an overhanging drop-off into the ocean. Nevertheless, the aircraft is controlled from a bubble, an integrated catapult control system through which officers set up the high-paced catapult-assisted takeoffs. While on deck, aircrafts are arranged by powerful computer assist. More so, Gerald Ford is powered by a suit of CAD tools. These improvements in technologies allow 25% more aircraft to be launched daily by 25% fewer crew members than required by the the USS Nimitz. The new Ford class carriers also employ advanced technologies, including an electromagnetic aircraft launch system or EMALS, along with other features to improve efficiency and reduce operating costs. The new A1B Reactor Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System or EMALS, Advanced Arresting Gear or AAG, and Dual Band Radar or DBR all offered enhanced capability with reduced manning. The Gerald R4 class is designed to maximize the striking power of the embarked carrier air wing. Ford's electromagnetic launch system also weighs less, occupies less space, and requires less maintenance. All these system updates allow Gerald R. Ford to operate with a smaller crew thanks to a greater emphasis on automation. And the warship will also see a reduction in maintenance requirements as well as a crew workload reduction. This will also allow for improved quality of life for the crew including better berthing compartments, larger gyms and workout facilities, and even more ergonomic workspaces. She is truly a technological marvel. Chief of Naval Operations Admiral Jonathan Greenart said she will carry unmanned aircraft, joint strike fighters, and she will deploy lasers. The Gerald R. Ford class armaments include the Radeon Involved Sea Sparrow Missile or ESSM, 
which defends against high-speed, highly maneuverable anti-ship missiles. It also includes the Close-In Weapon System or CIWS of the Rolling Airframe Missile. To protect its decks, the Ford class features numerous Sea Sparrows, short-range anti-aircraft, and anti-missile weapons. The ship also features RAM weapons and lightweight surface-to-air options that can be moved around the deck. Northrop Grumman also developed an advanced nuclear propulsion system with two reactors, four shafts, and a zonal electrical power distribution system for the ship. As far as refueling is concerned, the Ford also has more than 40 different fueling stations for the planes to get back off the deck once they land the carrier. On the side of the deck, chutes are provided for offloading any weapons that might be misfired. This is designed as a safety measure against casualties on board. The broader control center is the bridge, where the twin nuclear engines are positioned and can be used to power the massive ship to speeds of over 30 knots. Imagine such a large and heavy aircraft ship running at such a high speed. It's truly incredible. Just like any automated gadgets, Gerald Ford's class has an actual physical steering wheel as a backup if digital control malfunctions. Nevertheless, both paper and digital systems are used to navigate, but the touchscreen setup is said to almost drive itself. While the ship features a lot of military hardware, it is also designed to provide the modest level of comfort for the crews and sailors who are to stay on the ship over an extended period. Aside from berthing compartments, other modern adaptations include USB ports for phone charging, energy efficient light bulbs, fewer people in the cabin, large gym areas, and improved air conditioning. The space has allowed for distinct sleeping and resting areas. Given the ship's ergonomic workstations, people do not need to struggle with each other to get in their firefighting ensemble anymore. The ship has enough space for such activities. Crewmen are also said to be impressed with shorter queues for food, improvements to their berths, provision of flat screen TVs, boxing facilities, and the chapel. Markings on the hangar floor are the designed to be utilized as a basketball court as well, which could make for some interesting games at sea. Plush conference room include polished tables and ceremonial flags, while the captain's cabin is home to lots of Gerald Ford memorabilia, as a tribute not just for being the honored president, but also as an honored Navy veteran too. While this ship is gargantuan in its size and operations, the ship is not yet operational due to its teething problems. The ship was reported to have faced a launch failure on its aircraft in 2021. Although the issues aren't fixed yet and there is no probable notice yet as to when it could be amended, the latest indications say that the ship might be deployed sometime this year 2022. Going back to our initial questions, I guess this video has answered what makes up Gerald Ford to be the world's largest aircraft carrier and the best among its constituents. The question that remains unanswered though, is it worth over the billions of the US government? If Gerald Ford's features and size aren't enough, let us take it from Donald Trump's words during the USS Gerald Ford commissioning. American Steel and American Hands have constructed the 100,000 ton message to the world. America's might is second to none. This complements his other statement as he gathers his trust in the powerful aircraft carrier. He said, when it comes to battle, we don't want a fair fight. We demand victory and we will have total victory, believe me.